It's time for CNN Student News. It's cost-free and commercial-free. It's Tuesday, February 4th, and man, it has been a bad year so far for the U.S. stock market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is just that, an average of major U.S. stocks. It includes Chevron, McDonald's, Home Depot, Walmart. It's one indicator of how the U.S. economy is doing, and yesterday it took a plunge. The Dow closed 326 points lower than it opened yesterday morning. That's after a month of overall losses. For 2014, the average is down 7%. There are several likely reasons for this, from company earnings that were less than investors had hoped they would be, to volatility or instability in some of the world's smaller economies. It was a volatile week on Wall Street. The major averages all ended solidly in the red, partly thanks to mixed earnings. Big name companies like Amazon, Chevron and MasterCard all disappointed investors with their report cards. But the main drag came from worries about emerging markets. Wall Street is concerned the liquidity crunch in places like India, Turkey and Argentina could affect corporate profits here. And if American companies aren't making enough money, they won't grow, invest and hire. The week's volatility was especially notable in the Dow. It alternately rose, then fell in all five sessions. Some of the frustration was also tied to the latest Federal Reserve meeting. As expected, the Fed reduced economic stimulus by another $10 billion per month. But investors wanted policymakers to, in some way at least, address the turmoil in emerging markets. Now, the fact that the central bank didn't even acknowledge it in its policy statement was a disappointment to Wall Street. The meeting did mark the last with Ben Bernanke at the helm. The now former chairman's term expired on Friday. And the new leader of the Federal Reserve was sworn in yesterday. It's Janet Yellen, the first woman to chair the Central Bank of the U.S., President Obama nominated her in October. The U.S. Senate gave advice and consent, as the U.S. Constitution says it should, and senators voted 56 to 26 to confirm Yellen last month. She's worked at the Federal Reserve for more than a decade, and she specializes in the economics of unemployment. But Yellen's also expected to continue the policies of her predecessor, Ben Bernanke, and critics who didn't agree with those policies may also disagree with Yellen's. In today's roll call, we're sailing up the East Coast with some mascots you'd find off the East Coast. Talking about the Barracudas of Miami, Florida. They're hunting the waters near Coral Reef Senior High School. Not too far from the Georgia coast, we found the Herons of Brantley County Middle School. They're watching from Nahunta and will drop anchor in Yorktown, Virginia because there are clippers there. They're docked at Grafton High School. Immigration. One big issue the U.S. government's expected to debate this year. There are more than 11.5 million people living in the U.S. illegally. For years, the debate centered on what to do about that. Does the country work to deport more of them? Does it give them legal status, allowing them to keep living in the U.S., but with some limitations? Or does it give them a path to full citizenship and the rights and privileges that come with it? Compromise is needed to pass any law, and there are some mixed messages in Washington. Let's talk about areas where you might be able to make some progress. Yeah. In an interview with CNN's Jake Tapper, President Obama set off a flurry of headlines when he appeared to signal he's open to a possible deal on immigration reform that didn't include a path to citizenship. He said he's encouraged by signs House Speaker John Boehner may be willing to allow undocumented immigrants Morning, to remain in the U.S. If the Speaker proposes something that says right away folks aren't being deported, families aren't being separated, we're able to attract top young students uh, to uh, provide the skills or start businesses here, and then there's a regular process of citizenship. I'm not sure how wide the divide ends up being. That's why I don't want to prejudge it. At the same time, Boehner showed some give. This problem's been around for at least the last 15 years. It's been turned into a political football. I think it's unfair. Uh, so I think uh, it's time to deal with it. The question, is there common ground in finding a way for undocumented immigrants to remain in the United States and legally without full citizenship? This past week, House Republicans circulating their principles for reform, insisting undocumented immigrants not get a special pathway to citizenship, but allowing them to live legally in the United States after admitting fault, paying fees and back taxes, and passing background checks. 
Liberal Democrats led by Nancy Pelosi balked, saying legal status isn't enough, Good afternoon. continuing to insist on a path to full citizenship. The White House responded that the president wasn't backing down, that citizenship remains one of his key principles, but suggested the two sides were getting closer. I don't think it would be a surprise that uh, their principles might differ uh, to some degree from the president's, but the fact is um, what those principles represent is a significant evolution uh, in the positive direction from where they were. Aaron McPike, CNN, Washington. Time for the shout out. Which of these Winter Olympic events is oldest? If you think you know it, shout it out. Is it alpine skiing, luge, ski jumping, or snowboarding? You've got three seconds, go. In the first Winter Olympics in 1924, ski jumping was the only one of these events to be held. That's your answer and that's your shout out. Other events in the 1924 Winter Olympics, curling, figure skating, bob sleigh. Norway took home most of the medals. Norway has the most Winter Olympics medals of any country ever, but it's never won a women's Olympic ski jumping event. No one has, because until now, it didn't exist. So you could call the 2014 Winter Games in Sochi, Russia, a jumping off point. <laughs> Nice in-run position. She's super balanced, super straight. For Jessica Jerome, the feeling of a perfect jump is like nothing else. It's effortless and it's clean and you just flow. Jessica's incredible Olympic journey started with this jump at the age of seven. Number 48, Jessica Jerome. First day on jump, it's Good key. jump, Jess. She came home one day and announced that she wanted to ski jump and I had no idea what she was talking about. Within a few years, Jessica and a few of her friends from Park City, Utah were competing, hitting jumps at 60 plus miles per hour, right alongside the boys. We jump with our hair tucked back uh, and, and you, you couldn't tell the difference. It was decided that women would only be able to compete against each other. Which was great for us because we had our own, we, we wanted our own competitions. But then they would say, well, you're, you just don't have the depth that the guys have. The women could compete, but no Olympics and no official support. The guys were sponsored by the U.S. ski team. They had a substantial budget compared to what the girls, the girls had nothing. But they kept jumping, and the former mayor of Salt Lake City, who had firsthand experience with the Olympics, got involved. This is discrimination, it, plain and simple. But for decades, the International Olympic Committee disagreed. A sport must be widely practiced around the world. This is not the case for women's ski jumping. Jessica and teammate Lindsey Van and 13 girls from five different countries decided to take on the IOC in court. They filed suit demanding that women jumpers be included in the Vancouver Olympics. It turned out to be another heartbreaking defeat. There was a lot of times when I wasn't sure I wanted to jump anymore. Jessica says watching the Vancouver Olympics felt like seeing a party that she wasn't invited to and she was getting tired of fighting. I didn't like having to be an advocate for the sport. I would have rather been an athlete. Alan Alborn, a three-time Olympic ski jumper, was one of the skeptics. I would uh, be the first to say I was very uh, narrow-minded when the women first started fighting. But now he's a believer and he'll coach the first ever U.S. Women's Olympic ski jumping team at Sochi. To see these athletes finally achieve their dreams is just fabulous. Before we go, we're gonna show you a snowman from Indiana. Now you might be thinking, dude, it's been a cold winter. What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. It's 18 feet tall. It has rakes for arms, lamps for eyes, and a traffic cone for its nose. It's a traffic stopper. Two brothers built this Brobdingnagian behemoth using a wheelbarrow and a 20-foot ladder. It took them a few days' work to stack up, and their motto for the project makes perfect sense. Go big or go home. Of course, they were home, so they kind of had both. There are no plans to make it any bigger as of Yeti. Some neighbors might find the thought of that abominable, like our puns. You know how they stack those three pieces? They just glued them together. And now I'll stop because I can feel your cold stares. I'm Carl Azus for CNN Student News.